Okay, can you guys hear me? If you guys can hear me, then let me know in the chat. It's a pulse audio problem. Yep. Uh, normally I don't have problems with sound on the stream because I never play around with the sound settings here in OBS. The reason I had some problems is Pulse Audio was giving me some problems. Yesterday I was trying to join uh, one of the other uh, Linux YouTubers live streams, uh, Big Daddy. He was doing a gaming stream and I was trying to get my mic and all working in the Discord server, their Discord server, so I could chat with them while playing a game with them. And I really was fighting uh, getting sound in Discord for some reason. I had to change a bunch of settings in Pulse Audio, which fixed my problems with Discord, but apparently broke my sound here in OBS. Anyway, let me restart uh, my intro. Today's topic, how to trash your Linux machine. Today, I'm going to be running dangerous terminal commands that will hose your machine. These are commands you should never run, ever. Today I'm going to do it for educational purposes. I'm going to do this inside a VM though, inside a virtual machine. So I'm basically going, going to trash a bunch of my virtual machines. Um, you guys can follow along. Uh, if you want to play around with these commands, if you have a virtual machine you want to trash, by all means do so. These are commands you would never run though on a physical install on physical hardware. Because again, you will hose your system. You will permanently damage your install. And quite a few people are already in the chat here. Of course, we got a bunch of them. Hey, you got no sound. <laughs> Noble was here for a second. Gray has root. Stopped in to say hi. Eddie, no sound. Ice, your mic is muted. <laughs> Gray, check audio. Ansem, no sound. Ray says hi. <laughs> Kit son, no sound. That's it. We can hear you now. Okay. All right. So once we get through the, all the sound stuff, and then of course pulse audio. Wait, no, not pulse audio. <laughs> pulse audio, of course. Lenart strikes again. Hello. This will be a fun video. I think so. Is this a Gentoo video? No, I'm not going to hose any Gentoo installs. Uh, which I could though. It's not like I'm out anything because these virtual machines are easy to clone. What I did is I I took a VM. Uh, let me pull up my desktop here. What I did, I've got this VM of Kubuntu 1804. What I did is I cloned it four times. You see these four clones here? Clone one, two, three, four of Kubuntu. That way I can trash all of these instances of Kubuntu and I'm not out anything. <laughs> I've still got my real VM of Kubuntu that I'm not going to hose. If for some reason I trash all four of these VMs and I want to create another, to clone a VM in VirtualBox all you do is right click, choose clone. It's going to ask you for the name. I would name it Kubuntu 1804 clone number five. Hit next and away it goes. It takes about, I don't know, two minutes for it to fully clone a VM. And then basically you have two copies of the same VM. All right. Yeah, is it Suicide Linux Day? Yeah, it, it kind of is, but not really on Suicide Linux. We're going to use Kubuntu today. Uh, Carl's in the house. How you doing, Carl? Mr. F is here. Rick, Poison X, not on bare metal. Yeah, do not do this on bare metal. <laughs> uh, cheers from Greenland, and many thanks for all of your interesting videos. Appreciate that, Cluster Guard. All right. Toss, DT, will you also show removing letter R in the title? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, not sure what that was supposed to mean. Don't need terminal commands, just install the graphic drivers, says Toss. <laughs> Stream is lagging for you. A lot, is it? I don't know. Here inside the live preview on YouTube, I'm getting... Stream health is looking good. I've got a green. I've got a green inside OBS as well. Hmm. So I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm not doing anything on the network today. I'm not going to be downloading anything. Uh, none of these commands that I do today are, should affect the stream. So I'm not going to affect the internet in any way. And I don't think anybody's on my network here at my house right now. So... Handsome said, just for a second, it's fine now. Yeah. 
some of this sometimes is YouTube, though. It, it seems like it cuts in and out. Like, I'll be fine. I'm streaming in, I think I'm streaming in 720p today. Sometimes I do 1080, but it'll look great. And then all of a sudden, it'll buffer and you'll be watching it in 144p or some, some really crazy resolution. Yeah, there was a major buffer a minute ago, says Carl. Well, how to hose your Windows PC. Do a default install and it will do it for you over time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, yeah, Ski Meister's in the house. DL on DT, destroy Linux. All right, so what I'm going to do, I actually pulled up a couple of articles off the web. Uh, there's a million of these kind of articles. Most of them discuss the same commands, <laughs> uh, such as RMRF root, which... You know, it's one most everybody knows not to run. Of course, we have the fork bomb. It's another popular one. Uh, and various ways to to format a drive. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm actually going to demonstrate some of these. Actually, probably all of those that I just discussed. And I may throw in a few extras. Uh, other ways I know how to destroy a machine. From horror stories I've either heard on the internet or because I've done them myself. <laughs> so so this is a tutorial and I should follow along closely yeah pull up a VM Carl this will be fun anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, launch one of my clones of Kubuntu since I have about four of them that I can trash here <laughs> Yeah, Mr. F. Awesome show idea. Yeah. It's one I've been uh, thinking about doing for the last couple weeks. I just... And it's such an easy one to do. I mean, trashing a Linux install, I mean, requires no prep work. I mean... <laughs> so, I picked a day I really didn't have anything else to talk about. So, I was like, today is the perfect day to do that, how to trash Linux. <laughs> so, let's see... What is my login here? All right. We wait for plasma to load here. Yeah, 50 people are in the chat. Hit the thumbs up, says Ansem. Yeah, if you guys enjoy the channel, enjoy this stream tonight, or just having a good time, thumbs up. It helps. Helps the channel rank better and the the YouTube algorithms. The more eyes we get on the channel, you know, the more exposure we have, uh, you know, promoting Linux and free and open source software. All right, so of course this is Kubuntu 1804. Everybody knows what Kubuntu looks like. I got a little problem with my overlay here. I hadn't noticed this before. What I'm going to take the time to to fool with this for a second. Hold on just a second. All right. Getting some some of the uh, issues taken care of here this evening. All right. So I'm going to open a terminal. Any Ubuntu-based distribution, usually Control-Alt-T, brings us a terminal. So One of the reasons I'm doing this, too, uh, you know that didn't open a terminal. Control Alt T. Is it not? Uh... Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't work in Kubuntu. I, th I thought it worked in all uh, Ubuntu-based distributions, but Control Alt T wasn't working for me just then. One of the reasons I picked Kubuntu, I was about to say, for this uh, demonstration here today, is because I don't normally use KDE. I don't normally use the KDE console either. I wanted something that looks very, very different than my actual host machine. You know, my host machine is running Qtile and Xmonad. Uh, it's running URXVT, that particular terminal. It's not running anything as fancy as console. So I want to make sure any of these very dangerous commands, it's obvious I'm running it in KDE Plasma and not on my host machine. So. Uh. So the first one we'll discuss here. Let me pull back up. The most obvious one is remove. 
We've discussed this on the channel before, the remove command, which is RM. Let me zoom in here to, uh, to the terminal. You guys are not watching this just yet, but I'm going to try to set the fonts in the terminal really big so you guys can see everything I type. So, let's see, under appearance here in console, yeah, the text size is set to 9. Man, that's a small font. Let's set that to 18. We'll really make it big. All right. So, rm is the remove command in the shell. So, this is what you use to remove files normally. You can also use it to remove directories, even directories that contain files and subdirectories using the recursive flag, the r flag. You can also give it the F flag for force, meaning, hey, I really want this to happen no matter what I want you to do. Delete this folder, everything in it, all subdirectories, all files in those subdirectories. And what folders should we delete? Well, how about root? So you can imagine that's going to completely hose your machine. It's going, going to destroy the root directory, every subdirectory in the root directory, every subdirectory in those directories and so on and so forth and every file on your hard drive is going to go bye bye <laughs> that is a dangerous command actually that even without the root rm space dash rf is dangerous is a dangerous command to run you never want to run that command on a folder unless you are sure that it is perfectly safe to delete that folder for example I heard a story on the internet the other day on one of the subreddits. A guy uh, actu actually deleted all his user data. How did he do that? Well, he decided to make a directory. What directory did he make? Well, he decided to make directory tilde. He decided to create a new directory and the name he gave it was the tilde character. Now, for those of you familiar with how the shell works, you know that the tilde character is an alias for your home directory. So he made this directory. <laughs> now luckily, Kubuntu is smart enough not to let me create that directory. But if I was successful in creating that directory with the tilde, this guy was, I forget what distro he was running, he realized he made a mistake creating that, that tilde directory. So you know what he did? He said, oops, I need to remove that directory, rm-rf tilde, to remove that new directory he, he created. You can imagine what would happen if I type, if I entered, uh, if I ran that command. <laughs> so, home directory would go bye bye. As a matter of fact, it's a VM. Let's do it. Cannot remove. Yeah, it's not going to let me. Let's give it pseudo privileges. <laughs> it's still not going to let me. Come on, let me delete this directory. It's not going to let me. Let me see if it will. Dash R F. Root. Let's go ahead and, and try removing the root folder. I'm pretty sure this will fail. Yeah. Ubuntu has turned this off. It, it has disabled this command. Um, RM space dash R F root does not work on Ubuntu or Ubuntu based systems because so many people have accidentally wrecked their machines running that command they have disabled it if you want to run this command it tells you you need to use this very long flag dash dash no dash preserve dash root to override this this fail safe well let's try it dash dash no preserve root there we go we just deleted root recursively and forcibly And yes, this VM is trash now. Matter of fact, I'm no longer getting output in the terminal. Can I even close? Yeah, I can. <laughs> close current tab. Uh, I wonder if it would let me shut down now that I've done that. Probably. No, you see there's not even a shutdown option. We have deleted that particular binary that controls shutdown. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to xkill this VM. So I typed xkill on my host machine and 
boom. <laughs> okay, so this VM right here is trashed. Uh, there's no reason to keep it. I can delete it now. But just to make sure, I'm going to try to launch it again. And let's see if it'll actually boot up. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's it. It's not booting. <laughs> so, so this VM remove, delete all files. So that VM that's one down. Of course, that's again the most popular command. Everybody knows how to trash a system with rm dash rf. You really should not run that command on any folder. Um, Anyway, back to the chat. <laughs> a lot of folks were chatting while I was doing that. All right. Yeah, Mr. Elf, do it. Do it. <laughs> I need I need command to remove bugs permanently, says Toss. But you need sudo for the rm-rf, yeah. Using close graphics drivers on a rolling distro will trash your machine quite regularly. You know, I'm going to discuss some ways to destroy your machine that don't involve typing stuff in the terminal. Uh, and, and things like that. You're right. Uh, using closed graphics drivers, yeah. Um, yeah, Toss, it's not a command, it's a hammer. <laughs> I'm in a Linux class this semester for my IT program, and this is hella interesting. Oh my gosh, what an idiot this <laughs> has been. <laughs> I'm assuming my story about the guy that created the uh, tilde folder. It was a hilarious story, because the guy said as soon as he made that directory, he thought about it and realized he messed up. So then he thought, well, let me quickly delete that that that, that director, directory. So he deleted it recursively. <laughs> and all his user data, gone. It's, it's actually not a very funny story because I can relate. I mean, if you've ever hosed a system before, especially with data loss, it sucks. If you don't have good backups, it sucks. <laughs> you can create, uh, make directory M. Yep. Pretty smart guy. <laughs> yeah, and if you guys have any of those kind of crazy stories, like the the story I shared with the guy creating the tilde fol folder and then trying to delete it, feel free to share your horror stories of how you trashed your system. Yeah, Tim F, listen to DT laugh as he's attempting these commands. <laughs> Try sudo su. Yeah, I'll just see if I actually uh, could run sudo su. Well, now of course that VM I've deleted it, but yeah. Once I ran a rm-rf root, you know, it removed sudo, su, home user, the root user, everything off that system. Present arm says, hey DT, how you doing? Present. Ryan, that's how to empty the trash bin on KDE. <laughs> Ray, DT just wants to watch the world burn. Yep. Yeah, inside single quote, it treats as a character and not translate it to, yeah, home slash username. Okay. Ah, yeah. So to create that uh, tilde directory, he needed to wrap that in single quotes. That's what I would have needed to do. Okay. Maybe we'll try it on the next VM. <laughs> Burn it down. <laughs> it's a good day. All right. A lot of chat here. That's one way to get a clean partition for a new distro. We're going to discuss uh, partitioning some, some drives here in a minute. I'm going to go over how to use uh, DD, possibly. We're also going to discuss, you know, things like dev null, dev random, dev zero. <laughs> One seriously hosed system. Yep. Oh, how did you get the darker virtual box? Uh, virtual box respects uh, this theme I was using. I didn't do anything special on it. I don't think. Uh, yeah, cute theme will darken it. Yep. And then people are already getting ahead. And putting the DD commands in the chat. You guys reading the chat, uh, do not enter any of these commands these people are typing. Anything that begins with DD, do not enter into your terminal. It will format your drive. All right. Keep missing part of your show because I'm not getting notifications. Yeah, YouTube sucks. So, a Linux class. Oh. I once accidentally did DD of my Linux from scratch and almost lost the install. I felt so awful but managed to recover it. Yep. And Joel's here. He says, hey DT. 
yeah, you didn't miss much. Uh, I ran the rm-rf root command and basically hosed one VM already. Uh, DD equals Disk Destroyer. Yeah, DD has a lot of colorful nicknames like Disk Destroyer, Data, Deleter, and various other variations on that theme. Alright, let's open a, another VM. So, this is Kubuntu clone number two. Uh, one thing I will discuss here. And this is actually very important for your guys, uh, your safety. You see this here? Just this random, you know, wall of various characters and text that doesn't look like it's anything. That is rm-rf root, disguised. It runs that exact same command, but that is in hex code. Uh, people post stuff like this because they know no one can really read it or tell what this is and you might accidentally run that in a terminal or as part of a script so anytime you see something like this and you really can't understand what it is don't run it <laughs> anytime you see anything in this like hex code don't run it there's a very good chance that it is uh, something malicious and somebody is trying to trick you into doing something you wouldn't otherwise do so Ah, the classic rm-rf root. Yep, it was fun. I, I, I was happy. I, I got to do that. It's it been a while since I <laughs> run it in a VM. Yep, poor Kubuntu. Yep, that's one way to uh, to wreck your Kubuntu install. All right, Kubuntu VM number two. Yeah, Control Alt T is not hotkeyed to the terminal in Kubuntu. I wonder why. Control Alt T works in every other Ubuntu <laughs> flavor, I think. I wonder why Control Alt T is not working here. Anyway, same deal here. Let me uh, configure the font to be a little bigger. The font size and console here by default is very small. So I'm going to go to Appearance. And the text size is set to 9. Let's make it 18. All right. The next command is the classic fork bomb. What is fork bomb? It is this random string of characters uh, right there. <laughs> what that does is it basically locks up your machine. It uh, You run that in the shell. It defines a shell co function that creates copies of itself very fast. Creates as many copies as it can. It keeps replicating itself until it takes up all of your CPU and RAM. Of course, once it takes up all of your CPU and RAM, your machine is locked up. You can't do anything on it. It's basically uh, a denial of service attack. What's denial of service? Well, as the name implies, it means you can't do anything on your machine. <laughs> it may not do anything permanently damaging to your machine, but at least until you power off the machine and, and reboot your machine, you're not doing anything on it. So, uh, should I give this one a go in a VM? Yeah, why not? So, the command is colon, then the parentheses, and then space, colon, pipe, colon, space, the ampersand, space, and a bracket. You know what? I missed this bracket earlier, though. Let me make sure I get it right. And you know what? I should open up HTOP while I'm at it. Let me open up a second console before I run this. That way we can see a little bit of what's going on. HTOP is not on the system. How about sudo apt install HTOP? HTOP just takes a second to install. So, By the way, got my beverage tonight. This is Yingling, Yingling Lager. Yingling is the oldest brewery in the U.S. Alright, so it's using, I don't know, about 
Well, it's using quite a bit of the CPU right now. Apparently, I only gave this VM one core of my six core CPU. I don't know why I did that. This is going to make this fork bomb even worse because it, it's going to go 100% CPU right away. Memory, we're using about 600 megs of the four gigs of memory I gave this VM. Let's run it. See what happens. Not sure if that did anything. Uh, memory is going up though. It's already using 700 megs. Yeah, Ski Meister in the chat says he's having a yingling himself. Now, I'm not sure if I actually did anything with that command or not. Let me double check, make sure I did it correctly. It looks like I did it correctly. Hmm. Yeah, check jobs. You know what? I did it correctly because now the VM, yep. <laughs> I can't do anything in the VM. Never mind. I ran the correct command. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, look at the. Uh, Oh, I'm having way too much fun with this. <laughs> uh, let me kill this VM. Now this, we didn't do any permanent damage here. <laughs> Again, it's a de denial of service attack. Basically, you can't do anything in that machine uh, while that fork bomb has been executed. Because it just locks everything up. You know, With no CPU and no RAM available, you can't you can't run anything so <laughs> oh, that was fun and again that one is not harmful uh, at least not permanently so Let's see if I can catch back up on the chat here uh, yeah the name DD is an allusion to the DD statement found in IBM's job control yep which stands for data definition Yeah, that seems to be what most people will assume that the legit uh, definition of DD, what it really stands for is data definition. Though there is some debate on it, regardless of what it stands for. It's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing with DD. Uh, let's see. H top first to see, yep. Unfortunately, you know, H top quit working, you know, shortly after the fork bomb, you know, so. We didn't get the, the full effect of actually seeing, you know, the RAM go all the way to 100%. So, won't this bomb leak out of this VM? No, it shouldn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> everything's working on my host machine. Uh, you know, the VM is contained. You give a virtual machine, you know, a set amount of memory and a set uh, amount of cores of your CPU. That's it, you know. That's all it has to work with, so... Yeah, two down, two to go. No, I still I still have that VM. That VM, we, we didn't destroy that VM. Yeah, it might corrupt the file system if you end up having to hard reboot the machine, so I wouldn't run it on real hardware. Yeah, good tip. I wouldn't run any of, any of these on real hardware, even if they're not that dangerous. This is not something you really want to play around with on real hardware. Do it in a VM. Okay, let's see what's next in this particular article. Of course... Formatting a hard drive. Many of you have formatted drives before in like uh, command line installs. If you've ever done an Arch install, a Gentoo install, any kind of minimal install, server install, a lot of times you have to format the drives through the command line. Sometimes you have to create file systems through the command line. And that is what we're doing here with MKFS for make file system dot ext4 extended 4 that makes an extended 4 file system and then what do you do you point that to whatever drive and partition you want to format slash dev slash sda1 as an example this makes a file system on the first partition of your first hard drive now the first partition of your first hard drive is usually <laughs> very important <laughs> Don't ever format slash dev slash sda1 uh, unless you're really wanting to format like your main drive. Uh, 
So let me open up a another VM. I can, I can open up that same VM. We didn't trash that VM, so we're going to discuss several ways actually to hose a a drive by formatting it, creating file systems. Uh, might discuss DD. Of course, we're going to talk about moving the file system. All right. While I let Kubuntu load up here, I'm going to go back to the article. So some ways to trash a hard drive. Of course, we're going to make a file system on slash dev slash SDA1. Gone. We can also run any command and then with the uh, greater than sign basically direct that to slash dev slash SDA. What that does is takes that command and it, it writes it to slash dev slash SDA. Any command, pick one. It's going to write it to slash dev slash SDA. Uh, yeah, goodbye slash dev slash SDA. Of course, we can also wreck a hard drive with dd. dd if equals slash dev slash random. It's going to write random characters and code to of slash dev slash sda to your hard drive <laughs> basically it's going to take your hard drive and whatever's on it it is going to overwrite it with slash dev slash random which just generates a bunch of random garbage a good way to format a drive all right you can also trash a drive by moving it or, or you can actually trash a folder excuse me such as your home folder the tilde character move the home folder to slash dev slash null. What that does is the slash dev slash null directory is kind of like a black hole. Whatever you put there is destroyed. It goes to die. So if you move your home folder to slash dev slash null, your home directory, all your home user data goes bye bye. And yet you're not recovering it either. So, and there's probably not going to be a warning before you enter after you enter that command. It's not going to be like, hey, are you sure you want to do this? No, it's just going to do it. Same thing with the DD command. DD does not ask you for confirmation. Uh, if you type the wrong drive number, oh well, it's gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why some of these commands are very dangerous. If you want to play around in them, you can do it in a VM like I'm doing. Don't play around with these things on real hardware. All right, Ubuntu verse in the chat before we get started. He just hopped on. Did I miss a lot? Now I ran a couple of commands. I uh, ran rm-rf root and destroyed one VM with it and I did the classic shell fork bomb which basically just locks up your machine by sucking up all the CPU and RAM. But that's it. Yeah, Tony's suggesting delete the FS tab. That's our file system table. Well, you know, we'll, we'll discuss a few different ways to uh, hose a machine. You guys got some ideas that I haven't thought of? Feel free to share, and we might we might try out some of them. I can keep cloning this uh, this VM of Kubuntu. We can make twenty clones of Kubuntu tonight if we need to. So. All right, so let's open up console again. Boy, I wish the Control Alt T key binding work so I didn't have to keep going to the uh, the menu to search for it. Alright, edit current profile. Appearance. Again, we're going to make the text big so you guys can see. Alright, so some of what we just discussed, how to basically run your hard drive. Make file system. So mkfs dot whatever type of file system you want to create, you could do extended three or extended four or butter fs or whatever what have you and then the location of the drive that you want to create this file system on for example slash dev slash sdb for the you know second uh, partition table you know but how most people end up messing this up is they're trying to do this on a flash drive to slash dev slash sdb1 but you know what you mistype or you're not thinking and you do slash dev slash sda1 we need to be root I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter 
Oh. You know what? We do actually get a warning with this one, the make file system command. Awesome. Do we want to proceed? Do you guys really want to see it? We know that one's going <laughs> to, we know what it's going to do. How about no? Let's do a little um, something more interesting. How about command? We'll pick up command here in a second. And we're going to write that to slash dev slash SDA. Let's run this one. What do we want to use as a command? You guys, pick a command that you want to write to slash diff slash SDA. I'll, I'll wait for a few suggestions. I'll drink a yingling. Yeah, go, go, go. Make file system. You guys, uh, it's not going to be as exciting, I don't think, as you think. You would think the root reminder would stop people, yeah? <laughs> yeah, the fact that you can't run that without being uh, sudo or sue. Yeah, you would think you know, it would give people pause. Hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. <laughs> uh. All right. I wonder what we can write to slash div slash SDA. A command that we can output to slash div. How about just the ls command? which will list everything in my home directory. How about ls-lah? We're going to write that to slash dev slash sda. You guys want to open up htop too? <laughs> htop is still installed here because we didn't hose the machine. It should still be here. It is. Yep, there's htop. All right, let's run this. I wonder if it's going to make me be root or not. I'll try it. No, you do have to be root. I tried it as a my home user. Permission denied. Wow, I wonder why permission denied. Permission denied. Yep, yeah, it will not let me do that one. That is strange. I don't know. It didn't give me uh, any kind of a uh, warning after I switched to sudo su, though, did it? <laughs> uh. I don't know if that actually worked or not. Let's reboot the the VM. Yeah, Ski Meister says I was hoping for a little more shock and awe. <laughs> Oh, by the way, in case you guys weren't paying attention, fatal. <laughs> Hard disk error. So it worked. So it wouldn't let us just do it as sudo, but when I went over to the su user, which how you do that in Ubuntu-based distro, sudo su, switches you to root. Then it let me do whatever I wanted to to that drive. So, so ls pipe to slash dev slash sda. VM number two, gone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, uh, because I can't actually shut down this VM in a normal way, I have to X kill it. All right, so this Kubuntu clone number two, we might as well remove it. It is dead. We're just leaving corpses all over VirtualBox here. Uh. Is there any commands that can hose a machine with without root? Meaning permanently damage it? Uh, I don't know. That fork bomb, we didn't have to be root, but that just locks up your machine. It doesn't really you know, do too much damage. But to make physical changes to your system, install, remove hardware, format drives, that sort of thing, always requires root permission. So, yeah, you didn't say the magic word, <laughs> says Joe Panico. How you doing, Joe? <laughs> uh. Yeah, somebody wanted to wipe file system dash a to slash div slash sda1. Yeah, we might do some of this. Uh, I hope I can scroll back through the chat and catch some of these suggestions here in a minute. Yeah, set run level to 0 or 5. <laughs> DD and ISO image to slash div slash sda. It may still boot. <laughs> Only damage you can do to your, uh, yeah, your home directory. It would be really bad if you did this while on remote assistance. <laughs> 
All right, I'm, I'm running out of Kubuntu clones here. Let's go ahead and open the third one. <laughs> uh, but I have discovered the secret now. Ubuntu is smart enough not to let you run some of these commands, even as sudo. But if you do sudo su and switch over to that user, the su user, then you can pretty much do whatever you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> hmm. All right. And I'm going to go back to some of the article here. Uh, of course, we didn't try the DD command. You guys want to format a drive with DD? I'll show you exactly how people really mess this up <laughs> when they're trying to, uh, you know, format a flash drive and they end up formatting their SSD <laughs> instead. Actually, the move command. Uh, to slash diff slash null sounds really interesting. That might be one I want to do. You know what? We'll do them both. So let's open up the console again. <laughs> Which is why it's wise to have a great password for root. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Go, go, go to appearance here. Make the font a little bigger. I should have done this and then cloned the VM. <laughs> Made the font what I wanted and you know, got the VM a little better. Should have gave these VMs uh, more than one core of my CPU as well. So, the DD command. DD and then IF. Basically, uh, input is slash dev slash random. We've already discussed slash dev slash random is this directory on your system it's just a bunch of random garbage that's constantly being written and how about we output that to uh, if I can type slash dev slash SDA our hard drive <laughs> so, what's gonna happen here you know what let's see uh, permission denied uh, I didn't switch over to the super user Let's see if it will do this with just sudo. It may still deny me. It did not. It executed that. I got no other output, but I just killed that VM. That VM's gone. <laughs> so, uh, will anything happen now? It, it will still let me. I wonder if it would let me reboot. Let's go ahead and try the reboot. And I don't know, it's trying to reboot. We get the little screen about Spectre mitigation. You know what? I got a cursor. That did not execute. Hmm. So we failed on that attempt to destroy this machine. I wonder if we got the uh, the drives right. Let me go back into console. Wow, console loaded automatically that time. It remembered I had it open. That's very cool. I didn't know KDE actually did that. That's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, Tabella just joined us. Did I miss much trashing? Yeah, you missed a little bit. Matter of fact, some of you guys, I, I'm sorry I missed a little bit of the chat. Brian says hi. How you doing, Brian? Bubba is in the house. Philip, pseudo, yeah. Uh, dude slash dev slash zero uh, for the DD command. Yeah, we can use that. We can use a dev zero, dev null, dev random. Uh, try it again and stream it for us. What are we uh, about? Luke, yep. Or you could install another VM inside that VM that would lock it up. Do yeah, I'd look at the file system though. Did I miss much trashing? Now you haven't missed much. Yeah, they might be using slash dev slash hda instead of sda. Yeah, 
do watch command with DD. Very cool. Let's see, do we have a partition manager here? Of course, it's KDE. We're going to use their partition editor. Let's make sure we have uh, the drive numbers right. Yeah, slash dev slash SDA was correct. So why did that command not work? sudo su. Let's switch over to the real super user. dd if equals slash dev slash you know what somebody suggested trying slash zero instead of random I'm okay with that of equals slash dev slash SDA now this should work and I don't know why the first one didn't Mr. F said it didn't run long enough uh, you know it shouldn't take much with the, the DD command uh, but you're right. I mean, it, we'll let it run a minute, though. Why didn't I do status equals progress to show progress? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that. This is, you should be using U random instead of random for fast random generations. Well, you guys are really good with slash dev slash random you guys use that stuff much <laughs> huh. I mean what are you guys doing with slash dev slash random and slash dev slash zero <laughs> huh. you guys are like pros at this stuff yeah cluster says thank you all and good night good night cluster huh. all right I think we've let this VM run long enough. I mean, if it was going to hose the system, it should have done it by now. Yes. You see how long it took for <laughs> after I clicked reboot? That took a long time to come up. It's a good sign. Dan Snickles in the chat. He says, what's up, DT? How you doing, Dan? I think I just destroyed VM number three. Yeah, it's not rebooting. Yeah, this VM's trash now. So every time I run one of these very dangerous commands, I'm just going to do sudo su and switch over to su. Because apparently you really need to be that user to do all the fun stuff in Ubuntu. Apparently Ubuntu's doing some some work to try to prevent you from doing some of these commands probably so you don't accidentally do them which a lot of people accidentally mess up DD unfortunately it's a very easy uh, command to mess up yeah this uh, VM is not rebooting so <laughs> I, I hit reboot like a minute ago so X kill in my host machine and kill the VM. Boom. Let's delete that VM because it's not going to work any longer. I am down to my fourth and final clone of Kubuntu, but I can create more. Go ahead and get this one started booting. Let's see. Anything else we wanted to try? Move your home directory to slash dev slash null. You know what? we can do that because that actually won't trash that VM so I can run that and then I can try maybe another dangerous command after it all on, on the same VM yes uh, Tux suggested why don't I rm-f slash user slash bin slash sudo slash bin slash su yep that removes your sudo it removes your su so you can no longer execute anything as root on your system <laughs> uh, and that will trash your system obviously if you can't do anything as root you really can't do any changes at all to your system um, which means your system is in fact hosed alright so I'm going to open up the console again alright let me change 
to a bigger font again. All right, now this time let's take our file manager. Where is the Dolphin file manager? All right, we're in our user's home directory. What if we move our home directory to slash dev slash null? Do we need to be root to move the home directory? I wouldn't think. Mm. Says it cannot override it. Maybe we do. Password. Yep. See, we keep having to sudo su. And now I bet this will execute. No, still not. One of you guys mentioned maybe wrapping single quotes around the tilde. Or actually, I could actually uh, just write the full path to my home directory. That's what I'm going to do. The full path to this directory is slash home slash dt. Mm -mm. Yeah, it won't. It cannot override a non directory with a directory. I wonder why it can't do that. Hmm. Well, that's not. That's not fun. This article says I can do it, but when I type it in the uh, in the terminal, it will not let me move my home directory to slash dev slash null. You guys got any suggestions? Slash null. Yeah, is it isn't a directory. It is a file. So you can't move a directory into it. Okay. Well, I don't. That article then I guess was completely wrong. There's you can't move a your home directory to slash dev slash null. Apparently it's impossible. Yep, it's a file. Yep. Yeah, try uh, slash dev slash null with a slash behind it. I wouldn't think that would work either, but I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, because yeah, it's still not a directory, so you're still not going to be able to do anything. And Brian says remove our bash RC file. That shouldn't do uh, any real damage to our system. Nothing that you know that's that we can't get back from. Let's see. Can you move the root? Somebody suggested moving the root directory to uh, slash dev slash null, but we're going to run into the same problem here. Yeah, yeah. So that command from that article. I don't think we can we can do that. Yeah, what you drinking? I am drinking Yingling. Yeah, use the disk utility. All right. Well, since that command didn't work, let's see what you guys have written in the chat. You guys have written a few things in the chat to try. I'm gonna pick one of them. Let's see who had some good stuff here. Matter of fact, because there's so much chat to scroll through, you guys got a, a, a command that you know if will break this VM? Put it in the chat. I'll run it. <laughs> uh. Alright. Brian is asking, am I eating pot pie? No, I actually had some, uh, some chicken this evening. Fried chicken. It was very good. Homemade. delete slash proc delete user dash h root a matter of fact that's not a bad idea somebody mentioned getting rid of uh, the sudo -er, um, sudo file and the su file where was that command I was just reading it So much chat here. There it is. All right. Orium dash f slash user. Then sudo. That gets rid of sudo. That program is gone. Orium dash f slash. Is it bin su for the super user? Let's run it. Nothing was returned in the terminal. So I just ran this command. That should have removed sudo, the program sudo. So anybody that's in the sudoers file no longer has root permission. And this should have removed the root user. 
<laughs> so we don't have a root user and anybody that had sudo privileges before, sudo is no longer on the system. Well, all you have to do is just reinstall sudo, right? Well, sure. How do you do? How do you install software? Uh, sudo apt install. Oh, wait. Sudo is not on the system. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's exit. Can I sudo su? Nope. <laughs> uh, command su not found. Sudo. Sudo is not here. User bin sudo. No such file or directory. Without uh, root privileges, that VM is trashed. So. <laughs> yeah, how can you add root without being root? You can't. So rm dash f slash etsy password yeah you get rid of all your passwords but uh you should be able to uh just create a new user password or were you saying run that after you got rid of a uh, sudo <laughs> uh, apt purge rebooted as a knit one you should try shred slash dev slash sda well, the problem, you guys are giving me these commands now. I can't do them in this VM because all the good commands are going to require pseudo privileges, which we no longer have. Uh, so let me shut down this VM. And I will go ahead and delete this VM and clone another one. You can recover for them by going into the group menu. The grub menu. Oh, okay. Must be autocorrect. But yeah, the grub menu shut down all right let's delete that VM I'm on go ahead and clone a couple of more instances of Kubuntu so you choose the VM you want to clone hit clone give it a name Kubuntu clone is fine do I want to do a full clone or a linked clone I like doing a full clone if you do a linked clone the new machine you create it will share the virtual hard disk files between the two different VMs I don't want that I want two different instances of everything including the hard drive especially for what I'm doing <laughs> since I'm trying to do permanent damage to these VMs alright yeah, Mr. F, thinking of a cool script to tell you, but I'm lost for ideas. Yeah. You know what? I've got another article of uh, deadly commands I was going to take a look at. I'll pull it up in just a second. sudo apt purge glibc. Yeah. sudo change mod dash r 444 root. Yeah, that is another way. And I was actually going to discuss that. Uh, I mean, your machine will still kind of work. But yeah, you need to reinstall if you change permissions recursively on root. Yeah, Nico says, hey, DT in chat. Sue is just a file. You cannot kill root itself by deleting su and sudo. So this, the root user is still there. We just can't uh, switch over to that user, huh? But it's still there on the system. Is that that's what's going on? Now, there's still a root directory, which is owned by the root user. Isn't it possible to install sudo su with a live USB? Yeah, that's a good question. Could you just use a live USB to rescue the system at that point? Try removing just the terminal. Uh, well, you can remove all the terminals you want, but you can still drop down into the TTY prompt. Now, if you start removing the TTY, then you uh, you run into some issues. Hmm. Yeah, switch to a TTY, log in as root. Maybe you should have cherooted yourself into a root. You can just mount the file system. Let's see. I think I missed it. What are we having tonight? Suds wise. Yingling. Yingling lager. Brewed in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, Yingling is the oldest brewery in the United States. Let's see, login is root, screw around with your root, apt purge. Yeah, just copy su and sudo back to user slash sbin from the live medium. Okay. 
yeah, so just to root into it and then copy sudo and su back onto back onto your hard drive. Makes sense. So that one you can recover from. Uh, you don't have to you know reinstall. Yeah, set the system font to size zero. Hmm. All right. Uh, I uh, was successful in cloning Kubuntu again. I'm going to go ahead and launch that VM, but I'm going to go to a different article I was reading on more deadly terminal commands. Of course, rem-rf we've already discussed. Formatting the hard drive by making a file system, yeah. Or using a com command and writing it to your file system. Or using the DDF, <laughs> or not DDF, DD. Uh, DD command, uh, moving root to dev null. Well, that's strange because this is the second article they suggested moving a directory to dev null, but for some reason you can't do that in Ubuntu. They don't allow that. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, causing a kernel panic. Hey, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, I like kernel panics. Yeah. You see these uh, four different commands they gave? Apparently, using any of those commands should give us a kernel panic. I'm going to try one. So, pull up a console again. Man, this has really been fun here, playing around. <laughs> Uh, doing all of these commands because this is stuff you know I mean you've always heard never to do these things but most of us would never even attempt to do and even in a VM this is not something I would normally do but this is fun so they say this command here should cause a kernel panic dd if equals slash dev slash random of equals slash dev slash port of course, we need to do all of this. You know what? I already know I need to switch to SU, so why did I even? All right. All right. All right, we ran that command. We'll give it a minute or two. I need to catch up on the chat here. Yeah, can you purge X? Yeah, I mean, I could get X off the system, delete the X server, but again, from a TTY prompt, you could just reinstall XORG. You're not really trashing the machine. It's pretty easy to, to come back from that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. F says some of these commands would be better and more colorful if I piped them through LOLcat. I'm getting lag video. Seems to be buffering a lot. I haven't checked the stream health lately. Stream health looks good in YouTube. Stream health looks good on OBS, though. I've got green on both of them. I don't know. I don't know what the issue could be. I do apologize for that. My internet is not the best. It's not horrible, but it's not the fastest. See, mess with Etsy and FSTab? Yep. Remove boot, init RD. Yeah, good luck booting. Well, let's see. Let's reboot. Hmm. And the system will reboot. Hopefully, it'll reboot. I don't know should reboot and give us a kernel panic if that article was giving us correct information mm -mm, it didn't though so that's another one a command that did not work as advertised maybe I needed to run all four of those commands I was thinking just one of them would work but maybe I needed to run that whole sequence of events I bet that's what it was. See, I, I actually didn't read through this. 
we'll run them all just to be safe so showing you guys this let me I'm gonna run all four of these I ran the first one thinking that would be enough but I think I need to run all four of these commands to trigger the kernel panic So, sudo su, let's go ahead and start off over here. So, ddif equals slash devs or slash random space of equals slash dev slash port. All right, that's one down. But how would I execute the rest of them? Let's do a new tab. All right, then I will echo one. We'll write that out to slash proc slash sys slash kernel that sounds bad slash panic all right how about cat slash dev slash port wow all right how about cat slash dev slash zero we'll write that out to slash dev slash mem bad address okay so that actually didn't work how about reboot I mean did that any of those commands do anything no I still have a graphical environment I've got a cursor so yep this VM is still good so we're gonna keep I'm trying to break it. Got more stuff to try in a second. Waiting for plasma to load here. Yeah, nothing is indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> RS says Kubuntu's too great to be taken down. Yeah, sudo apt purge and then depackage awk removes all packages. Yep. You know what? That's not a bad command, actually. That is an interesting little command you put there, uh, Michael is it Michael or Michel might be French uh, anyway the command he wrote here I don't have copy paste working in the terminal let me get this uh, I, I need to make this one bigger because this is an interesting command he is having us run here so sudo apt purge what is this this removes software. sudo apt purge and then the name of program would normally remove software. We're going to do the dollar symbol for our uh, shell prompt, basically. dpkg, which is a program, of course, in Debian for your packaging. Dash L. Is that the pipe symbol? I think so. Pipe awk. Single quotes. Bracket. Print. Dollar symbol two bracket. Oh, symbol single quotes and then bracket. That's hard to tell. No, that's bracket. Bracket single quote. In parentheses. I think that's it. Let's see if that works. Syntax error. Where did I run into a problem with that? So it didn't like something right here. I didn't type the two. Unable to locate package status. Okay. That command's not working for me. Did I not type that right? Uh, Michelle, if you you suggested this command was did I mistype something here I can't copy and paste from my host machine into the VM that's the problem so I actually had to read the chat and type that yeah you forgot the two yep I don't know it says unable to locate package status I don't think I deleted anything though Yeah, 
know, we should have done it with the <laughs> sudo apt purge and then give it the y flag for yes to answer yes to everything. No. Let's see, add grip. After D package. <laughs> uh, Tabella, don't worry, DT. We can't follow you while typing all sorts of random things, too, yeah. I mean, some of these commands are starting to get a little complicated. Once you start using things like grip, sid, and awk, you know. Let me see if I can find something I can copy and paste. Mission Impossible, yeah. All right. Fork bomb, we've already tried. Execute remote scripts. All right, now this is a public service announcement here. This isn't actually something that I can uh, execute on camera and actually hose a VM with. Let me show you what this is. So, wget. What wget does, it goes out on the web and it retrieves something from whatever URL you give it. So how about HTTP www.untrusted.com Alright. And, you know, it pipes it out to the shell. Basically, that command goes out to this untrusted website and it runs whatever this URL returns into your shell. Bad idea. I mean, I really shouldn't have to explain that. So don't ever do anything like that. If somebody uh, paste something like that in a chat or in a blog. Probably not a good idea to do that. Let's see. Alright. Disable root command privileges. We've already done that. Really, we're running out of ideas to hose a machine here. Alright. Do you guys got anything simple? I mean, we still have this last VM here. It's something simple that doesn't require a lot of uh, regular expressions and, you know, no grip set awk, you know. Because that's hard for me to uh, type all of that, you know, if it's a very long and convoluted command with a lot of regular expressions. Because I actually have to type it from the chat into the VM. I can't copy and paste. All right, W get stuff. <laughs> Let's see. If you want a microkernel, then use Minix. Is Minix still around? I hadn't heard about Minix in forever. In Minix, what uh, basically inspired Linus, of course, to create Linux. I, I think that's uh, kind of where Linus Torvalds got the idea for, for Linux was Minix. Yeah, put reboot in bash rc. Uh, you want to run another dd command? You want to apt purge with the y flag, the yes flag, with lol kit. Maybe install non-free software. <laughs> uh, yeah, change owner. Ah. Uh, that's a good one. And I, I was going to discuss that one, too. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier, sudo change mod dash r for recursive. And let's give it some crazy permission, like 000. zero, zero. Uh, you know, root. Don't do something like that. It changes every single directory and file on your system. It changes every file and directory's permission to 000. zero, zero. You will never recover your system at that point because there's no way you're going to go back and figure out what permissions needed to be set for every directory, every file on your system. It's impossible. Uh, you pretty much have to format the drive and reinstall. So don't ever do that. Somebody mentioned changing owner, which would be very similar. Chown, change owner. Recursively. You need to do this recursively. So I didn't give it the dash so change to nobody colon nobody so so 
User and group is nobody and nobody. Recursively en route. Invalid operation. Well, I guess... What was the invalid operation? Oh, the uh, R flag? Maybe we didn't need to do the R. Invalid group. Uh, because this group does not actually exist, we have to pick a different group. One that actually exists. Um, pick a user or group that actually exists on the system. Which one do you think would maximize the damage done here? I guess I could pull up a, another terminal and actually see what all users are available to us. In users, yeah, DT, DT, okay, well that's not, <laughs> that's not what we wanted. Audio, somebody suggested audio, that's a great group. Audio, and audio. Invalid user. So it's okay for the group, but it's not okay for the user. How about root and root? Oh, that's bad. It actually executed that. Root owns every single file and directory on the system now. <laughs> uh, yeah, people keep talking about I'm, I'm failing uh, on a lot of these. Yeah, a lot of them aren't working. And I knew some of them wouldn't work. Uh, mainly because, especially Ubuntu, is uh, they've gone to a lot of trouble to prevent some of these things from executing. Like that fork bomb. Uh, well, the fork bomb I was able to get executed, but removing the home directory or the root directory recursively, you know, they prevent that. Uh, let's see, is there a way to flash your BIOS and brick the motherboard? Yeah, you can do that, but I'm not going to demonstrate that. Uh, you should never really try to flash your BIOS. You only do that under extreme circumstances where you're prepared to completely brick your machine if it goes wrong. So basically, your machine's kind of trashed anyway. You know, it's kind of like last option for you. All right, so we changed all of that. So how about reboot? And you noticed when I hit, I typed reboot, did you guys notice I wasn't super user? I did that on purpose. <laughs> because now root owns everything. It owns the reboot binary, you know. <laughs> uh, and yes, because root owns everything. I've, I've hosed that, that VM. I mean, if this was a real installation, really, you wouldn't want to run this any longer. It would be very dangerous. Uh, let me kill this VM since it's taking so long to reboot. It shouldn't take this long to reboot either, so changing all the permissions has already kind of done something here because it, it, it didn't reboot like the other clones of Kubuntu did. So we've already... That's, uh, that's five VMs that we destroyed. Should I clone another one or call it a night? <laughs> we'll clone one more. And wait a couple of minutes for that to clone. It takes about, I don't know, a minute or two for, for these clones. All right, back to the chat. You need to be super care careful with it because you absolutely can brick it. Well, with the uh, BIOS flash, yes. Guys, you don't want to really be doing that. What's the worst brick event that you were able to salvage? If you're asking me, I've never had... Uh, these days, because I'm so pressed for time, if something's going to take me more than an hour or two to fix, I don't even bother. But some of them, I mean, even some of the ones I've shown you today, I mean, like changing permissions recursively on root, could you come back from it? Yeah. You could probably spend weeks fixing your system and come back for it, but why would you do that? Modern Linux installs today, 15 minutes, you're back up and running. It's just not worth it. So. Yeah, how does root own sudo now, too? 
But does root own sudo now too? Yeah, they probably do. Everything on the machine, root should own it now. On that VM before I deleted it, of course. Because on no Linux system, you have to be root to do reboot or shutdown, right? I didn't have to type sudo or switch to su to do that reboot. They just allowed me to do it, so. I changed the master C group to allow zero RAM and CPU. Yeah, Mark, you're talking as a uh, tech again. <laughs> clone, clone, clone. Yep. That's the beauty of these VMs. Yeah, just destroy the system on booting. Remove system D on the last one. That's not a bad idea. But that does that really destroy anything? I mean, is that irrecoverable? I don't know. It's worth trying, though. I've got the clone finished here. Let me go ahead and boot into it. It's not a bad idea. sudo remove dash r slash etsy would do anything would do anything. It'll protect itself. I, I do not believe sudo remove slash etsy would do anything. It'll protect it. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying, Mark. You think that that's been disabled in something like Ubuntu? That's one of the ones that they won't let you mess with? I'll try it. Since it's a VM, I mean, if it executes, so will. Yeah, remove slash Etsy slash password. You know what? We'll try that one too. If uh, if it won't let let me remove the entire slash Etsy folder, we'll see if it'll just let me do slash Etsy slash password. You guys are full of ideas today. All right, let's fire up the old console with a K. I'm really uh. Learning to love console with a K. It's a really nice terminal. I wish I didn't have to run uh, KDE, unfortunately, to use it. <laughs> Alright, so sudo rm dash r slash etsy. You know what? I think it. I think that executed. Let's change over to root. Let's list. <laughs> slash Etsy is not there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mark, yeah, Kubuntu at least will let you delete Slash Etsy. So, uh, the VM is still functioning. I mean, it probably will not on reboot, but for right now, we're good. Any other commands we want to run through? Let's see. Of course, now I don't have to do slash Etsy slash password because we did the slash Etsy folder recursively. So that took care of that. We got more DD commands. <laughs> you know, that is an interesting command, actually, uh, bread moth. I have never even considered that command. Let me switch over to the super user and show you guys. Wait. <laughs> It won't let me. <laughs> so deleting the slash Etsy folder is already, uh, yeah. So would it just let me sudo something? No. Sue so, can't determine your username. Okay. So I can't shut down either. Sudo shut down. No. So, uh, all right. So, X kill. Boom. <laughs> all right. That is the sixth VM destroyed. All right. Since that one went really quick, we'll do one more. Last one for this evening. <laughs> Slash Etsy is a very important folder, by the way. It is where all the config files for a lot of your programs are located. Apparently it's where some of the config for sudo and su live because they no longer function correctly after I deleted slash Etsy. And if sudo and su are not functioning correctly then it's not much you can do. Hmm. 
All right. Yeah, Steve says, this is kind of hilarious. Yeah. Again, we're doing this for educational purposes this evening. I'll do one more VM here. I'm going to destroy one more VM. Then I might sit and chat with you guys for a bit. If you guys got any anything to chat about Linux related or not Linux related. There's only so much we can do blowing away VMs. I mean, we, we've kind of exhausted a lot of our options here. Of course, the real easy ones, the rm-rf command. Be very careful using that thing. Don't use it unless you know what you're doing. DD, same thing. Be very careful using that command. Don't use DD unless you know what you're doing. Both of those are very dangerous. All it takes is you mistyping something and you remove the wrong directory or you formatted the wrong drive. So. A lot of these others that we've ruined, uh, uh, these VMs, like removing root, uh, changing permissions, and all of that stuff, these are not things you would normally be running in the terminal anyway. You know, you're probably never going to be changing permissions in the root directory. You know, that's not something you would normally be doing. All right, got one more clone. I'll go ahead and boot that. Oh. It launched on the wrong screen for me though. Sorry guys, hold on a second. I'm gonna have to kill that. Alright, it's booting on the proper monitor now. Alright. <clears throat> Catch up on the chat for a second. Alright, so yeah, remove grub and system D. That's a great last one. Somebody mentioned I should delete system D. It's not a bad idea. Deleting grub does not host the system though. You can recover from that. It's easy. As a matter of fact, you can probably recover from system D the same way you recover from grub live USB. So, I mean, it's not completely trashed. You can fix it, but just for fun, sudo apt purge system D and grub at the same time we'll just blow them both away yeah present arms I had some KDE dependencies anyway for Caden Live so you put console on your system on Trinity and don't you run Trinity though I mean that's kinda you you already had those probably all those dependencies running the old KDE 3 desktop uh, is this VM a UEFI? No, it is not. Uh, let's see. All right. And this will be the final VM I trash. <laughs> uh, let's just make it full screen. All right. So sudo apt purge system D. Grub2. Grub2 is not installed. It says the following packages will be installed. Why in the heck? No, we don't... Uh, let's just stick with systemd then. It was trying to run a complete system update, which there's quite a bit of stuff to update on this. It will not let me purge system D. I wonder why. Oh, I see. Okay, though. It is going to remove 271 packages. I'm not sure if I should run this on the stream because it's going to pull it's going to pull stuff down from the web. Look at the look what it's saying. If I want to do this, type the phrase yes, do as I say exclamation point so this is some of the safety stuff that Ubuntu has put into place you actually have to go through these extra steps and the stream health is gonna be bad while this downloads stuff from the internet that's why I really didn't want I was thinking about do I really want to run this but it shouldn't take too long so if the stream goes bad for a little bit It'll just be a couple of minutes. It's going to buffer while uh, Kubuntu here pulls stuff down from the internet. 
Wow, it's removing KDE. <laughs> it's removing everything. Remember, just remove plasma. Oh. Yeah, there goes plasma, K Sys Guard, K Win is gone. <laughs> yeah. Ocular, goodbye. Yep. All the libraries for KDE. Yep. Network manager is being deleted. Package kit is gone. It even deleted the plasma wallpapers. It deleted Linux image 4.15. It deleted the kernel. So it deleted, yeah, so this system really is hosed. I was thinking maybe we could get it back with a live USB. We probably could, but honestly, after deleting everything, including the kernel, eh. <laughs> uh, Carl in the chat says, DT loves a lightweight distro. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be very lightweight in a second. <laughs> oh, why would it delete the kernel? Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, one of the dependencies of System D is the kernel, or maybe one of the dependencies of the kernel is System D. That's a good question. Why did it delete the kernel? Oh. By the way, we just got to progress 94%, and you noticed it stopped. You know why it stopped? I'm pretty sure this VM is dead. <laughs> so that's it. That VM. Bye bye. I'm going to X kill it. And just for fun, let's boot it back up just to see if anything happens. Yeah, so, wow. Kernel panics. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That VM. That VM was wrecked, so well, you can delete that clone. And that's the last VM I'm going to trash this evening. <laughs> I'll uh, hang out with you guys and chat for a few minutes more before we kill the stream. So we killed, what, eight, nine VMs there in various ways. Some of them were quick and painless. Some of them we tortured the VMs a little bit before we put them out of their misery. But, All right, yeah, Present Arms is leaving a link to his distro, trinity.mypclinuxos.com. Very nice distro, Present Arms, his uh, Trinity PC Linux OS. If you guys like light and fast, you'll love his distro. Yeah, why would it delete the kernel? This purge, sudo apt purge, delete dependencies as well, I think. Uh, yeah, Bread Moth, System D is too invasive, yeah. Yeah, Neko, yeah, I purged it, that's why. Yeah. Is it even... Uh, Let's see, is it even Linux anymore without the kernel? No. <laughs> it's nothing, actually, without the kernel. Without the kernel, you're not doing anything. So, no system D on my machine either, like Dev1. Hmm. Doesn't purge remove anything system D depends on, too? Apparently so, because I said sudo apt purge system D and it deleted 300 or 271 packages, which included KDE, all the KDE programs, all the KDE libraries, and the kernel. <laughs> so. Yeah, without the kernel, all you have is GNU. It's no longer GNU slash Linux. That VM, that's just GNU. Yeah, it also, apt also removes packages that optionally depend on a package, such as the kernel and system D. Yep, kernel panic. Tim F is in the house. I had to step away a few times, and every time I come back, <laughs> DistroTube is laughing in an evil manner. Yep. Yeah, this was fun. I, I like you know being able to type these in a VM and not doing any real harm to my physical machine I was surprised at how many of these failed to do anything though that e either Ubuntu disabled them from working properly or you gotta jump through all these hoops to get them to work or some of them you know they just don't work at all um, the one moving stuff to the dev slash dev slash null file that didn't work at all for me, and two different articles told me that command would work, but I couldn't get it to work. Let's see, I've had to, yeah, kernel panic, 
Yeah, that says it all about System D, says Poison X. Yeah. System D's not that bad. Talk about a load of dependencies. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. DViz is in the house. He says, today DT has some grenades, so many VMs. Yeah. Well, I, I review a lot of distros. Plus, I like to have these extra distros around to do stuff like this. I would never do this on real hardware. But I've got all these VMs. I can do whatever I want to these VMs. I'm not out anything. So, yeah, that was lots of fun. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Appreciate that analog. Thanks for stopping by. Neckbeard Brony. <laughs> Love the name. For Arch Linux, the equivalent to purging system D is pseudo Pac-Man dash capital R lowercase C N S base base Deville. Yep. Yeah, do a review about the common desktop environment. People have asked me about that. Uh I don't know if I will do anything on CDE. Uh, it's not really recommended you use CDE. Apparently it's kind of insecure. The Arch Wiki discourages people from installing a CDE. Apparently, like I said, there's some security issues with that particular desktop environment. Yeah, present arms. Kill any init and you'll have a kernel panic. Yeah, PC Linux OS is pretty good. Yes, it is. It's, if you like something that's kind of quasi rolling release, and it's a uh, RPM based, isn't it? Doesn't it use the apt package manager though? I think it's RPM based, but it uses apt. Correct me if I'm wrong, present arms. Uh, might not be thinking about the right distro. Let's see. Uh, wait, creator of PC Linux OS is it here? No, present arms has his own spin of PC Linux OS he does using the Trinity desktop. Uh, he's not the lead dev of PC Linux OS though. At least I don't think he is. <laughs> uh, uh, so basically, auto remove on steroids is a uh, apt purge. Yeah. Well, auto remove removes stuff that's no longer needed on the system. Purge, you're removing stuff that is needed on the system. <laughs> it's like, uh, DT, have you taken any Linux classes or just accumulated the knowledge over the years? Yep, I am not. Uh, Linux professional in any way. I went to school for music, didn't do anything computer related at all. I don't work in the computer industry. It's all just me, you know, playing around with Linux, you know, over the years. Basically just being a big nerd. Not a sysadmin or anything. GNU herd. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Since I deleted the kernel, I should have tried to see if I could get herd installed in that VM. That, now, that would be fun. Would the GNU stuff even work? No. The GNU stuff requires the kernel. I mean, that's why the GNU project is working on their own kernel called herd. It's because you need a kernel. Without a kernel, you got nothing. So, <laughs> uh, minus the kernel, yep. Yeah, present arms, yes, it's app, but for RPM, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Peck WM is comfy. Yeah, Peck WM is a nice lightweight window manager. Reviewed it on the channel. It was part of my obscure window manager series. It's not a bad little uh, open box like window manager. It even does pipe menus and things like that. Although I don't think it's under development anymore. It doesn't seem like it gets uh, any kind of development anymore. No regular releases of any kind. Yeah, Present Arms also says uh, PC Linux uses Synaptic. Yeah, so it uses apt in the terminal and the Synaptic package manager for a GUI package manager. That's really cool for RPM distro. Yeah. Yeah, sudo move user slash user to slash home. Why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the lead dev of PC Linux OS is not long for this world, says Present Arms. That's true. Uh, for those of you that are not f f don't follow PC Linux OS, the lead dev of PC Lin Linux OS has been battling, I think, cancer, and he posted on uh, the PC Linux website uh, just a couple of days ago, announcing that he doesn't have very much longer. So, let's see, you can apt auto remove package name, and it gets rid of packages and the unneeded dependencies. Yeah. Yeah, GNU herd is a meme. Yep. Use Slackware, says Neko. I need to take a look at Slackware on the channel eventually. I gotta get around to that one. You, know, you guys keep bugging me about that one. 
reviewed so many distros, have you not reviewed the granddaddy of them all, Slackware? Yeah. That, that's my fault. So. <laughs> Yeah, the kernel allows software to associate with your hardware. Yeah, without the kernel, I mean, you're not going to have anything. I mean, your displays are not going to work. None of your hardware is going to work. Uh, basically, the kernel takes care of all your hardware stuff. So, without the kernel, you have nothing. Yeah, how about SLS Linux? I'm not sure what that is, SLS. Let's see, Gen 2, yep. Yeah. If you're asking about me and Gen 2, I did a, I did a Gen 2 install on the channel. I did a base Gen 2 install. It took me five and a half hours. <laughs> uh, but we got it done. It, it actually wasn't that bad. I mean, it, it takes a long time, but the, the install is not like it's a hard process. It's just time-consuming. Because it like took over an hour for the kernel to compile. Yeah. But it's not like you got to sit there while it compiles. You know, I st stepped away, ate dinner, you know. Uh, was an L S L S what Slackware was based on? Well, if it's what Slackware was based on, then S S L S is no longer around because Slackware is the oldest Linux distribution that's still around. So, yes, yeah, soft landing system, yeah. Yeah. SLS Linux was before Slackware, yeah. If it was before Slackware, then it's, it's no longer being developed. I'm not going to bother taking a look at dead distros, especially distros that have been dead for decades. So, for one thing, it would be a nightmare trying to get that stuff installed on anything on modern hardware. So, I, I wouldn't want to fight with something like that for something that nobody's going to run anyway. Yeah. How about a BSD review then? I reviewed True, True OS on the channel. Hated it. Hated it. I reviewed Ghost BSD. It's not bad. But I, I need to review some others. Uh, you suggest NetBSD, FreeBSD, or OpenBSD? I might take a look at OpenBSD. That, that project interests me a little bit. Might do OpenBSD. I, I thought about maybe checking out Dragonfly. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah. No, just regular free BSD. I might do that too. I know True OS was based on free BSD and I hated True OS, but True OS I hated because that desktop environment of it, of that Lumina desktop, complete and total garbage. The worst thing I've ever seen. I can't believe they actually ship with that thing. It's so bad. <laughs> Yeah. I hate Lumina too, says Bread Moth. Yeah. Alright, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream here. We've been streaming for a little while. We ended up trashing about eight VMs. No VMs that I really needed anymore. They were just clones. But, uh, yeah, check out BOS. You know what? I should check out the BOS clone Haiku on the channel. Matter of fact, I really need to get around to that because that does interest me. Haiku. So I might take a look at that. Yeah, review elementary OS Loki. I did uh, elementary. And when Juno comes out, I'll take a look at Juno. I might actually put Juno on real hardware and take a look at it too. Yeah, Haiku is never going to be ready. Maybe not, but it, it's an interesting project. React OS, I need to take a look at on the channel. I've looked at it. I mean, React OS has been around for a little while. It's a cool project. Andre, thanks for having us, Derek. Appreciate that, Andre. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream. I want to thank all you guys for, for hanging out with me this evening. You guys that are still in the chat. Uh, Alan, Andre, Brad, Diviz, G-Name, uh, Jarillo, Kenny, Mark, Neko, Paul, Philip, Present Arms. You guys check out Present Arms, Trinity, my PC Linux OS. Steve, Tux, Z, thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening. Before I go, I do need to give a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. David, Carlos, Nick, Daniel, Brian, Leor, A.K. Ron, Keith, Dan, Michael, Tony, Bruno, David, Mike, Silvio, Omar, Mark, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Carl, Greg, Rob, Matt, Christian, Tiedemann, Stephen Z, Eduardo, Alex, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen B, Marcus, Interceptor, Tubella, Humaid, Paul, and Chuck. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys. <laughs>